Let's go around here. In today's exciting episode, I'm probably talking loud. In today's exciting episode, we repair rotten weatherboards. So I've got brackets, I've got bolts, but this episode is about making this room warmer. We are insulating everything. Brackets and bolts are for bracing. While you're ripping off all the plasterboard, it's a good idea to put modern style bracing, despite the fact that the house has been like this for 70 years without falling down. Safe to come in here? What, what? Just talking about bracing. So that's to the floor. Ah, the bush. Part of this bracing, we've got to screw a big bolt down into the foundation below the wall frame, anchoring the wall to the foundation. But look how close we are to the ground here. So rather than crawling under the house, I need to replace this weatherboard anyway. So let's go in this way. Well, this is what happens when you open a can of worms. You find more problems. <sighs> okay, getting a nog around that corner there is going to be impossible with this tiny gap. So I've got two options. I think the most obvious option is just to go under the house. But if you look under the house, it's very, very short under there. Very, very cramped, which is fine, but there's also the plumbing pipe in the way. You have blocks there now. Do I have blocks? I'm telling you, you have blocks. Over there, we have solid fixing now. Thank you. Uh, about an hour. An hour. I oh. dropped my phone in the water too, oh, so I've got no phone now. Okay. 
So, fix most of those boards down below. I've got a coat of paint on that little sill thing. And then once that sets, I can uh, put that last weatherboard on top. I think it's important in that little junction to make sure both surfaces are sealed. And that way we won't get that rot again. So when this, when this was a kitchen, this was where the extraction vented out to. Just goes straight out the wall and it had this little fan. Apparently the screws holding it are rounded over as well. It's very old, so this needs to go. And obviously it's a uh, thermal requirement to remove it because when I used to make coffee there in the mornings, I could hear all the birds and the trees here like they were right next to my head. It's actually quite nice. Now, this presents something that I struggled with when I first started building, and that is replacing weatherboards in the middle of a wall. You want to minimize the amount of weatherboards you take off, so you've got to surgically remove those ones. So you find the studs in the wall. Typically, the way to do that with weatherboards is you look for nail patterns, so often the nails would be popped. But in my case, the wall was open on the other side, so that's a lot easier. I just measured up, and then transferred the marks out here and I'm just trying to stagger the joins. The more randomized the joins the better, it's less likely to leak and just kind of looks better. Now that was the easy part. The difficult thing about taking weatherboards out is that they overlap each other. And if you don't want to take the top one out, but you still need to cut the bottom one out, you need to get underneath. This is what I do. There you go, that little sucker is the key. Cut it clean. That one came out in one piece. Another pro tip, if you're gonna cut on the stud line like that, go slightly off center. The problem with cutting on center is that that's likely where the nails are. The Hilti blade handled it though. Thanks for painting these. Yeah, they look good. Oh, did I not do the ends? No, no, I just cut them. Could you please paint these ends? It does? Yeah, that looks good. Thank you. My finest work. Just call me Picasso.
My name is Scott Brown and I'm afraid of pocket doors.